Mr. Adamson, in the discussion tonight, you said that Europe was at a turning point in light of the recent elections in France and Greece. What is that point, and what must Europe now face in the future? Well, I think it's a turning point will become a, a tipping point in the sense that this discussion tonight takes place just 24 hours after the election of François Hollande in France as president, where he's been pushing through his campaign and now obviously now is in power for a, a growth agenda. In other words, not just talk about austerity, let's talk about in measures to create jobs and growth in Europe. That's what we need. And he's not a lone voice anymore, and that's why it's a tipping point, because hitherto people have been saying that, but they've been maybe lone voices on their own, solitary voices, Mary Monti in this country talking about it, the President of the European Central Bank, certain commentators, members of the European Commission, who have tried to push this, this idea of a growth agenda, but now with the arrival of this rather important personality, the President of the French Republic, saying the same thing, this now the turning point becomes a tipping point to my and if you agree that a growth agenda is necessary for Europe to move out of the financial crisis, to what extent can European solidarity facilitate or hinder the compromise on a growth agenda? What we have until now, until this growth agenda has become more mainstream, is just a course of you know, debate about austerity, about people being told to pay more taxes, uh, be expected to, to live with uh, lower public spending, and it's made life pretty grim for everybody. Never mind the idea of one richer country transferring money to a, a less rich country. So the big victim actually, the big uh, problem in Europe at the moment is that solidarity, the idea that we're all this together, has really suffered big time. That the way to address that, the only, the only way to address that I would argue, is to reintroduce this growth agenda, not jettisoning at the same time. The austerity measure, we still need that, because it won't work otherwise. The markets, the banks will not allow us just to jettison austerity in favor of growth. But you bring for the first time since the crisis started four years ago, the two together. And the idea that you start creating growth, jobs, prosperity, and solidarity, hopefully, will come back slowly but surely to be what it was before the crisis took place. And it seems that Europe has had to deal with many recent intractable geopolitical security questions. In light of how these conflicts tra transpired, how relevant is the idea of a European common security policy? Well, we've had this you know, for quite some time, this idea of the European Common Foreign Security Policy, but it hasn't really done very much. We know that partially because the member states have to more or less agree you know, unanimously to do whatever, and that's often very difficult to do, often because there are other arenas in which to, to, do, to do action, like NATO or the United States like Nations Security Council. So the idea of a particular uh, distinct and clear and unobtrusive EU role is still being sketched out. But clearly we have to, we in Europe have to take more and more responsibility, certainly for our near neighborhood, our backyard, whether it's in the context of the Arab Spring or even still the Balkans, where there's still many issues, because we cannot expect certainly the United States to keep helping us, as has been the case in the past. Thank you very much. Thank you.